Welcome to The Eclectic Thrifter, where we thrift with purpose. Thank you for joining me as I do my part to bring back the brooch. I'm going to share a few pieces from my personal collection. I don't have that many as well as brooches I've thrifted over this last year for resale and for projects I have in mind for the crafting channel. I'll do my best to provide a history when I come across brooches that have a maker's mark. I hope you'll enjoy. This lovely pendant set belonged to my grandmother. It's from the 1920s. I wear it during the winter holidays on a purple knit coat. This is a simple barrette I used to wear when my youngest son was little. He loved brushing my hair and putting this bread in it. This lovely pendant was a gift from my father to my mother. As was this pendant. This lovely brooch is made of Connemara marble. It was a gift to me from my mother in 1974. She brought it back from a trip to Ireland Connemara marble is found exclusively along Ireland's rugged Atlantic coast. The unique layers of beautiful, rich, pale green within the marble are formed by tiny crystals of green serpentine, diopside, chloride, white calcite, and dolomite. These sediment deposits were transformed by formidable forces, the same forces that formed the mountains of West Ireland and Scotland. The value of this piece today for resale would be around $50. It's about the size of a 50 cent piece. This little pin I had when I was little. This is a pendant I painted in the 90s when I was learning to oil paint and trying my hand at Picasso. This is a pin I thrifted about 30 years ago and I believe it's from the Bauhaus time period of art. I do not know who the maker is or the artist. If you have any ideas, please share in the comments below. I'd love to know. This is just a little pin I wear on one of my winter coats. This lovely pin is from Austria. It's made of plastic and not glass. And this is a lovely mid-century piece. And here we have a vintage amber lucite pin, handmade. You can see how it's constructed here. I might try to do a reconstruction of one. I believe this is a Sarah Coventry piece. I could not find the mark. And this lovely pin is about four and a half inches long. You can see the back in the construction. My mother loved these butterflies and she would sure love this one. This is a little lapel pin. Now some of the pins are missing their stones, but I'm going to be replacing those. This was my first little jelly belly. And this little bee's belly needs its jelly replaced. And this is a lovely piece. This lovely bird is Sarah Coventry and we'll talk more about that company later. This little handsome fellow needs a few stones replaced. This is a sweet lapel pin. And this lovely little dog I'm going to keep, he's from the 1950s. As is this wonderful pin. This is valued about $40. Another jelly belly. 
And I know well, there's a home for this pin. I believe this is coral. I can find no mark on the back. And I believe that is coral also. This sweet piece is a pendant that I'm going to reach restring. And when you open it up, there's perfume on the inside. This is a lovely hand painted Russian piece. And it is signed. And its value is about $40. And this is just a simple black glass pin. I thought these two were especially lovely. This piece is an old piece. I do need to replace a few of the gemstones. I'm going to keep this one for St. Patrick's Day. And this is a lovely piece I just purchased for the gems. This lovely hand painted piece came with its history. Now these cameos that are missing their pins on the back or that are simple and less valuable, I'm going to be using those in a crafting project on the new channel, The Eclectic Crafter. purchased this for replacement gems and this is by Avon and I wear that on one of my coats. This is my first Trafari piece and I just thrifted it last week. Gustavo Trafari founded this company in 1904 at the age of 20. In 1910, he joined with his uncle and it became Trafari and Trafari. When his uncle left the company, it returned to the singular name of Trafari. And in 1917, Leo Krusman joined Trafari as well as Carl Fischel. In 1925, the company then became Trafari, Krusman, and Fischel. And the logo KTF with an enlarged T at the center is a rare logo and it's extremely rare and it's quite a bucket list find. Alfred Phillip joined in 1930 as head designer 
and his background in designing for Cartier, Van Cleef, and Arpel brought the name of Trafari to the forefront and is highly sought after today. This is from Monet, as well as this. And this is also Monet. This lovely piece is about three inches long and it was made by Sarah Coventry. Sarah Coventry Jewelry was named after the granddaughter of Lyman K. Stewart, the founder. Her name was Sarah Coventry Beale. In 1949, the company was established not long after the Emmons brand was formed and is recognized as the oldest direct selling jewelry company in the world. My mother often attended Sarah Coventry parties just like they attended Tupperware parties when I was younger. And this is part of the Emmons brand. This brooch is about two and a half inches by two and a half inches. This lovely vintage Christmas tree is by Hollycraft and I'm going to keep this one. Thank you so much for joining me in bringing back the brooch. Please like, subscribe, share, hit the notification button, and please check out The Eclectic Crafter. I'd love it if you'd join me there. Have a lovely day.